your guide to these adventures of the mind, the editor of astounding science fiction magazine, John Campbell, Jr. If you try to stop a man by putting a wall in his path, he'll fight, he'll break through somehow. But if, on the other hand, you trap him in an endless quicksand of instability, uh, vacancy of nothingness, that's a worse trap. That will stop him. Any security man will tell you that there are two fundamentals in his business. One is, there is no secret that can't be cracked if you're willing to try hard enough and spend enough time, effort, and money on it. And the other is that if there are too many secrets that you have to investigate, you can get lost in the morass of multiple secrets. Therefore, one of the standard procedures in a security system is to classify as secret 10,000 things that aren't really important for every really important one. It's a neat trick, but they're wrong on one proposition. There is one kind of secret that cannot be cracked no matter how much time, effort, and energy you spend on it. Now let's consider as such a secret. Now let's uh, go into the project uh, with the person of Derek Brand, FBI man, called in to be second in command of the security force on the secret project. When I first saw Eden Valley, Colorado, from the helicopter that was taking me there, I was impressed with the geometrical neatness of the place. Every building was separated from every other by high fences topped with barbed wire. No aircraft was allowed to come within five miles of Eden Valley, and if it did, it was shot down without asking questions. So the pilot landed at an airfield five miles away. The pilot shut off the engine, and a couple of half-track armored cars pulled up. The twin machine guns in the turrets of the cars were trained on our helicopter. It's queer how a 50 caliber hole can look three inches in diameter when you know it's at the other end of it. An army captain climbed out of one of the half-tracks and walked toward me. He didn't offer to shake hands because his right hand was on the butt of the pistol in his holster. Mr. Derek Brand, that's right, here's my identification. Thank you. Captain looked over my papers, handed them back to me, and then searched me to make sure I was unarmed. Okay, let's go. We went over to the armored half-track. I climbed into the rear, which was only a steel cell big enough for four people to sit in. The captain slammed the bar doors. The car started up. And then the other armored car pulled in behind the first one with all its machine guns trained out of I knew that all I had to do was try to get out and a hail of steel-jacketed lead would come at me through the bars. We left the airfield and rumbled out over the road that led toward the most cautiously guarded scientific research station in America, Eden Valley. Less than 15 minutes later, the car slowed to a halt. Okay, Brad, we uh, I got out with all those grim-looking, gun-toting characters surrounding me. It was a relief to see a face I recognized. What's the matter, Brand? Don't you like our transportation? Hamilton! <laughs> Why, you big gorilla! <laughs> no, I don't like your transportation. The seats are too hard. Well, don't let that worry you. From now on, you walk. <laughs> no cars allowed in Eden Valley. Come on along, boys. Let's go to the gate. All right. Two fences around the place, huh? You don't take any chances here, do you? Can't afford to. The 200 yards between those fences is lighted night and day. We call it no man's land. Hamilton, uh, tell me, what sort of project is this? Uh, what are they doing here? Now, Bran, you listen to me. And listen careful, because I'm going to tell you rule number one around here. Rule number one is we do not talk about, ask questions about, or even admit the evidence of anything going on here. Oh, I see. Uh, nothing going on at all, huh? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. This is just a normal American town inhabited by normal American scientists, normal American FBI agents, and nobody else. Uh -huh. Real normal. And there's nothing going on here at all. Understand? Yo. Yeah. 
Hamilton wouldn't say another thing until we got to his office. I knew him well enough to know that there was no point in asking questions. He was big, tough, and hard. One of the finest men I've ever known. But he'd never let friendship get between him and his job. Yeah. It's a 44 Magnum revolver. Carry it with you, fully loaded at all times. Anyone does anything out of the ordinary, you shoot first. Do I, uh... Leave him in condition to answer questions later? If you can. But not if someone else's life's in danger. If there's a chance, he'll get away. Now, come on over here to the window. I want to show you something. Yeah. Look over there. That's the research area. Uh -huh. Now, that's fenced into sections, and no man working in one section is allowed to discuss his work with a man from another section. You understand? Yeah, I've got it. Now, <clears throat> you see that cliff over there? Mm-hmm. Well, according to the geologists, that's the solidest single hunk of rock in the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> Looks like one piece of solid granite. It is. An eighth of a mile high. It would take an H-bomb even to crack it. Inside it are the tunnels where the most important part of this project are contained. <laughs> now, nobody goes in there unless I tell you personally that it's okay. Mm -hmm. If they try to go in on their own hook, you shoot to kill. Of course, how hard it is to crack a secret and how much you have to spend to crack it is going to vary with how much the other fellow is willing to defend it. When you set up a defense system such as they had around Eden Valley, it isn't going to be easy nor cheap to crack it. They're going to have to work hard. But even so, it can be cracked. I spent the next several days prowling around Eden Valley trying to get the feel of the place. Until I knew it was normal, I couldn't spot anything abnormal. I went around to the heads of the various sections looking things over and quietly trying to see if I could make sense out of the whole project. Well, after three days, I still hadn't smelled anything suspicious. That was the day I knocked on the door of Dr. Edmund Gurton, head of the mathematics division. Yes, who is it? Uh, Derek Brand, FBI. Oh, yes. Come in. Mr. Brand? Just been playing a little music on my half highly. Oh, yes, so I see. All right, that's quite a rig you've got. Cabinet must be 15 feet long. Don't tell me that it's all full of high fidelity phonographs. Sir. Oh, no, 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 no. I have a computer in there and various file cabinets, a tape recorder. Oh? Yes, there's space to put them all on cabinets. Well, sounds like quite a good rig. Yes, it is. I like to listen to music while I'm juggling with set theory and algebraic topology. It keeps my brain from tying itself in knots. I see. But we cannot talk and listen at the same time. I shut it off, huh? Now, how can I help the FBI, Mr. Brand? Well, it's, uh... Nothing much, Doctor, just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, generalities, really. I'm trying to get the feel of the whole setup here. And now it, uh, it's the math department's turn, eh? Yes, that's right. I uh, notice that most of you men don't seem to be doing much. Uh, some of them are scribbling with pencil and paper, and the rest just seem to be staring into space. <laughs> what did you expect mathematicians to do, Mr. Brand? Run adding machines? Oh, uh, no, no. I realize that higher math is mostly pencil work and brain work, but... Uh, <laughs> Is that all they do? No applied mathematics? Well, once in a while, perhaps, but not too often. Our work is mostly theory. Oh, I see. Tell me, have you noticed anything, uh, well, anything unusual about the actions of any of you men? I mean, do they all do their jobs as they're supposed to and generally toe the line? You mean, do I suspect any of them of being spies? Yeah, that's about it. No, no, I do not. I, bu I believe I would know it if any of my men were an enemy agent. Oh, really? How? Well, you remarked on the fact that most of them sit around apparently doing nothing. That's as it should be. My men are paid to think, not to work. <laughs> if one of them ever seemed to be too busy, I would suspect him immediately. For the next week, I just kept my eyes open. I couldn't help wondering what was going on under this mysterious mountain. What were they making there? A new bomb? Spaceships? Ray guns? Time machines? If there were spies in Eden Valley, what were they spying on? I didn't know, but I kept looking for spies. Somehow during that week, I became suspicious of Dr. Edmund Gurton. 
I decided to talk it over with Hamilton one morning, so I headed for his office. I was walking down the hall toward his office when I heard the shots. I had my gun out and was running toward the office. Some of the other agents were right behind me. The door to Hamilton's office was open. There was a body on the floor. Hamilton was slumped over his desk, a smoking gun still in one hand. He lifted his head and looked at me. All right, Chum. You hurt bad? I'll make it, I think. Take over, Brand. You're in charge of security. Keep... Keep... Oh. Hamilton had passed out, but I could tell by his pulse that he was still in fair condition. I went over to the guy on the floor and rolled him over. I recognized him as one of the scientists from the chemistry section. He was quite dead. Evidently, he shot first because he couldn't have pulled the trigger after he was shot. I took another look around while I waited for the ambulance to come, and that's when I noticed the hole in the wall. I went over to get a closer look. A bullet had smashed into the wall and had broken off plaster. I could see something inside the wall. I pulled off a few more fragments. There was a microphone in the wall and a maze of wiring. Someone had known everything that went on in Hamilton's office. And I thought I knew who that someone was. The trouble with elaborate defense precautions to protect the secret is, of course, they constitute a challenge, just inviting the enemy to attack. And that if they're willing to pay for it, they can do a lot of damage on their attacks. It turned out that the shooting of Hamilton had been only part of the plan. Our security forces rounded up six other men who had been in on a carefully timed break. They had hoped that killing Hamilton would give them a diversion so that some of them would be able to get into the tunnels underneath the mountain. Well, not one of them made it. We had them all within 15 minutes. As soon as I was sure that Hamilton would be all right, I started tracing down the wires that led from the walls in the office. They led straight to the nearest fence, and that fence led straight to the mathematics section. I went over to the big cabinet where Girton kept his hi-fi rig and started opening up the panels. Just as I'd figured. There was a lot more in there than a souped-up phonograph. There were at least 10 tape recorders, all of them working. The big chassis was full of transistors, vacuum tubes, and printed circuits. It looked as if it had been designed to get plenty of equipment into a very small space. Girton's office was connected by some sort of communication line to every project center in Eden Valley. All right, get your hands in the air and turn around slowly. Hello, Doctor. Oh, it's you, Bran. Did you figure this all out by yourself? Yeah, yeah. I uh, followed the lines across the fence. Mm -hmm. And what does all this indicate to you? Well, it's pretty obvious that you're the top man here in Eden Valley. Hamilton took orders from you. Yes, yes, poor Hamilton. I should have seen that break coming. Uh, say, Doctor, would you mind uh, putting that gun down? Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Sorry, I... I was afraid you might think I was a spy. Oh, well, you couldn't be. No enemy agent could have planted all this stuff without Hamilton knowing it. This equipment was put in when Eden Valley was built. You're quite right. Doctor, tell me, just what is Eden Valley? Eden Valley? Well, essentially, Mr. Brand, the project can be represented as a multidimensional pseudo-manifold whose cohomology modules taken as I direct sum over the dimensions induce a canonical multi-homomorphic function whose integral over certain chains is zero. Why? Suppose you have two companies. Mm -hmm. One makes forging stock out of scrap steel, the other makes small parts out of forging steel. All right, so? So suppose the second company sells the small parts back to the first company as scrap. Oh. Oh, you mean the two companies are selling their steel back and forth to each other? One makes forging steel out of scrap, the other makes scrap out of forging steel. Right. But neither knows what the other is doing. Each one thinks it is doing useful work. Well, that sounds like a lot of work doing nothing. <laughs> exactly, it is. Eden Valley is a lot more complicated than that example, but the total result is the same. Wait a minute. Do you mean to tell me this project isn't doing anything? Precisely. 
the big secret of Eden Valley is simply this. There is no secret. I, I, I just don't get it. It's quite simple. Each one of the projects here is doing research work, which is very helpful to America. Mm -hmm. But we have it set up here to look as if we are building something big. Well, all those men think they're working on something. That is because we don't let any of them know what the others are doing. They can't see the whole picture. Oh, wait a minute. I get it. A psychological trap. That's it. Uh huh. Look at it from the enemy's point of view. Well, sure, sure. They, uh, they have to find out what we're building here, so they send in their best agents. The agents can't find out because there's nothing to find. But they have to keep on trying. That keeps them tied up here, running around in circles instead of, instead of doing their snooping elsewhere. Right. right. And suppose an enemy agent uh, does find out that there's nothing going on. Well, his superiors won't believe it. And even if they do, they still can't afford to stop hunting just in case they're wrong. Well, they, they have to send in more men. That's it. Well, and they have to send in their best men, their scientifically trained agents, because no one else can get in. Uh -huh. And they know that no one else could figure out what's going on. <laughs> How do you like that? that? That means we have their best scientists working for us instead of for the enemy. Exactly. <laughs> we don't arrest them unless they become too obvious, but we know who most of them are. We just keep an eye on them all the time. Hmm. How come you couldn't stop that chemist from shooting Hamilton? Well, our system... It's not perfect. We didn't know about that man. But the secret is still safe, and we will improve it as we go along. Oh, by the way. Yo. Uh, tell me, uh, how did you figure out that I wasn't what I was pretending to be? <laughs> Very simple, Doctor. You told me yourself. I? How? Well, you said that a mathematician who looked too busy would be acting suspicious. You were just too darn busy, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's quite true. The secret that cannot be cracked is the secret that there is no secret. And the problem that can't be cracked is the problem you have misstated so that it has no answer. A lot of human troubles stem from an effort to crack a problem that doesn't exist or to crack the wrong problem. The more effort you put in on cracking such a problem, the more you're sold that there is a problem to crack. Just as the harder the spies tried to crack the secret that didn't exist, the harder they had to try. <laughs>